Is this thing on? I haven't really done this in a little while. James D. Buzzard, and today is the first video here on the channel of the year, and it is the first video here in the new space. So I had to do it big, and today we are going over one of the things that I get asked about every single time you guys get a little peek of it in any of my Instagram stories or anything like that. So today we are going to be talking about my production case and everything that's inside of it, and everything that I use with my clients as a full-time content creator, somebody that creates commercial and corporate content for small, medium, and large businesses. And I do not only videography, but I also do a lot of photography for a lot of my clients as well. So I needed a kit that is very versatile and adaptable no matter if I'm shooting photo or I'm shooting video or a combination of the two on a single day. So let's go ahead and jump into this case, what it is and every single thing that I have inside of it. The case itself is the SKB i-Series 421312. The name of the case is actually the interior dimensions of the case. I love that SKB actually does that with all their cases. So the 42 is the length, the 13, 42, 13, 13 is the width, and then 12 is the depth. So you can really, you know, get to know what equipment is going to fit and what equipment isn't going to fit depending on the name of the SKB case, which is super, super nice. Now this case just so happens to be the think tank collaboration that they do with SKB where they make the interiors for the case. And I absolutely love the interiors on these SKB cases, the think tank collaborations, because the padding on them is extremely, extremely thick and they use very, very, very strong Velcro. I just love the overall quality, the feel of the case. Everything feels extremely secure and snug and they have that really thick, nice SKB foam in the top of it. Mine, I actually ended up cutting part of the foam out and I got one of the uh, SKB Think, Think Tank um, laptop holders and that fits perfectly in here. All I did was cut the foam and this thing fits perfectly in here and it almost looks like it came like that in the case. I love having the laptop holder in there. You can put papers, you can put a laptop, you can put an iPad, whatever you guys need for the day, you can toss it in there. Super, super nice. And it comes with a few extra little zip holders, which I kind of put some cleaning gear in, some wipes and stuff like that. Extra little, you know, battery for a remote. Now that we went over the top of the case, we went over the size of the case, the 42, 13, 12. Let's go over the actual guts of the case, everything that we have in it. Starting with, we'll start with the back of the case. In the back of the case holds all your tripods. Um, you can hold, you know, umbrellas if you guys like to shoot with umbrellas and stuff like that. Um, I have, you know, just arms and stuff like that in here, grip arms. Um, I have a grip head in here and I have two large Manfrotto stands. These are the Manfrotto 1005 BACs if I'm saying that correctly. I kind of forget the name, but I think I got that right. Those are the Manfrotto nine foot stands. They're plenty high enough for all the use cases that I need them for. So that back big giant slot fits light stands and all of that kind of stuff really, really nicely, uh, which is why I love this case to begin with is because I can fit my two light stands and I don't need to carry an extra bag for my light stands and tripods and that kind of stuff. They all just fit right here in the case, ready to go. And I can really work right out of this case, no matter wh what location I'm at. Starting with this case, let's start all the way on the left, which is where I actually hold my modifiers. And I also have a pop out, which I have one already popped out over here. 
I have a pop out white balance card. So right here, this is my pop out white balance card, folds down super nice. This is the size when it's unfolded. And this right here is a seven in one. So this seven in one modifier has everything that you guys would need for doing a super small like little product shoot, bouncing a little light uh, for a client. If you guys are doing a talking head kind of situation, you can bounce light. You can also diffuse light with this seven in one. So everything that your normal five in one does, this has it, but it also has chroma key. So it has your green and it has your blue backgrounds for you guys to do like uh, your chroma key stuff. Moving on from our super small slot over here on the left, we also have our gimbal. Now, I use the gimbal RSC2. This is Ronin's smallest gimbal. And the reason I do this is because I shoot with two mirrorless cameras and all of my lenses are easily able to hold uh, on this camera with the weight that they're at. Um, so this gimbal really gets me by and I've really just been doing a lot less gimbal shooting for my commercial and corporate work lately. So I just have this one in the bag for when I need it, but I've really been getting away from using and relying on a gimbal to get shots and I've been getting a little bit more creative in other ways than just with uh, gimbal shots and having videos full of gimbal shots. Um, so I love that I have a gimbal, but I don't use it a ton for my commercial and corporate work anymore. I usually just use it for a very select couple of clips. This bag holds all of my drone stuff. So the reason I hold it in a separate bag is because typically I will, have, I will leave, just leave this on location or inside or wherever I had it and I'll go run outside do the couple little drone things that I need to do. This bag all, you know, folds up like this and I can grab it, take it out to wherever I need to do my drone stuff, do my drone stuff, bring it right back inside and I'm ready to get back to normal shooting. Now the drone that I'm actually using for all of my shoots right now is the DJI Mini 2. Now I have quite a few drones and I also have access to a lot of other drones like the Autel. I even have access to the DJI Inspire if I really needed it. But as a solo shooter and all of that kind of stuff, I've been finding I really just need quick establishing shots and that's exactly what the DJI Mini 2 allows me to do is quickly get up and grab my uh, grab the shots that I need. I can toss on an ND filter if I really need it, but this super small little drone kit allows me to grab those establishing shots and the few tiny little things that I really use drones for um, in my uh, work that I do as a creator. Now, moving on from those two side pockets, we are starting to get into the meat and potatoes of this case. And the really the biggest reason I love having it is because of everything that it's able to fit over here on the right side. So over here on the right, starting off, we have just a simple strap in our Shinobi or our Atomos Shinobi monitor. Now I use the Atomos Shinobi because it's just a simple monitor. There's no recording. It has a great picture and um, is a bigger screen than what comes on the cameras that I shoot on, which the cameras that we're shooting on these days are the Sony a7C. This is my photography camera and my B camera for when I'm shooting video. So typically I might have this stagnant on a tripod or something like that, grabbing a stagnant shot. And I'll typically be using my FX3 for all my main shots and for my B-roll. I love having the A7C in my kit. I actually side graded as I like to call it from the a7 III. The reason I upgraded or side graded as I like to say from the a7 III was simply because of the unlimited record time that this camera has um, and the fact that it otherwise from that it pretty much shoots the exact same video quality. Everything else that the a7 III does it's just missing a front dial which I am gonna say I really really do miss having that front dial and full control over my exposure like that but other than that this camera is a fantastic B camera and an awesome photography camera uh, for being a you know content creator that 
primarily creates for digital spaces. So, you know, for online digital spaces. So it's awesome having this, this uh, camera and I've used the hell out of it. And uh, yeah, I don't really think I need to upgrade cameras this year if I really don't want to. And I probably won't this year. I'm really trying to not buy a ton of new gear this year. Now this is my main camera, the Sony FX3. This is my workhorse camera, what I do probably 90, 95% of all my content on um, is this camera. This is my main camera, not only for everything that I do at Buzz Labs Creative, but everything I do outside of Buzz Labs Creative, getting hired by other production companies and everything else, this is my main workhorse. I think eventually I will get two of these Sony FX3 bodies, but for right now, I'm pretty happy with just having the one. Um, this is a very expensive camera to me, so getting another body is gonna be quite an expensive investment, but I do think it would be well worth it. One, to have a backup FX3, and two, to have two completely matching cameras, not only in settings and you know ergonomics and everything else, but you know exactly the same look. Um, for your final image, which I think will really just help my overall workflow. I've always had two different cameras and I've never really had two of the exact same camera. So I think if I was to do something differently in this entire kit, I would just have two of the same bodies, whatever bodies I chose. Um, I would have two of the exact same bodies. So if you guys are kind of looking at this kit and thinking, you know, what uh, equipment to buy and everything else, I would definitely recommend to get two of the exact same bodies, whatever those are, get two of the exact same bodies. That'll help you out for your workflow and everything else. Moving on from our camera bodies and the monitor, let's actually talk about the lenses that I'm using all the time for video. Starting off with one of my newer additions as of last year, this is the 24 to 105. This is an awesome lens, not only for the B cam to be able to get like that super far reach from a distance especially at weddings and stuff like that we're not really talking about weddings and stuff but I do use the hell out of this this is that's my original reason for buying this lens was for weddings a lot of the normal content creation that I'm working on I'm usually not ever farther than eight on an 85 millimeter or so um my main lens is this next lens that we're going to be talking about this is my newest addition when it comes to lenses um in my kit this is the sony 35 millimeter 1.8 now if you guys are getting any lens for your guys' Sony camera, if you guys shoot Sony, remember we're not exactly talking about the gear itself today, but the entire kit as a whole. But if you guys are looking to get one focal length, I would recommend a 35 millimeter focal length. This is my workhorse focal length. Even on this lens, I always find myself at 35 millimeters. I love the look of 35 millimeters. I love the focal length of 35 millimeters. Um, I just love it. And the reason I downgraded from the f 1.4 lens was simply because in video mode the biggest issue i was having was focus breathing with the sony f 1.4 so i had to downgrade to the sony f 1.8 but this lens is so much lighter and i really really like this lens even though it's um not quite as you know buttery smooth bokeh as you're getting with the f 1.4 but it's only a one stop difference in light and all of that so I really really like this lens now under the 35 millimeter I have another new lens in my collection this one I had to add this year which is a 50 millimeter macro lens this lens is amazing for getting super up close on products on details on all of that kind of stuff and has really been helping me tell stories and uh, really been helping me you know show things off in a completely different uh, field of view than what people typically get to see. So I love having a macro lens in my kit. Definitely get a macro lens for your guys' kit if you guys are
are you know looking at lenses, consider buying a macro lens. Now our, my last lens in my main kit, I do have other lenses at home that I use, but these are the main lenses that I always, uh, pretty much always take with me no matter what production I'm going to. This lens is one of my absolute favorites for talking head and stuff like that. This is the 85 millimeter 1.8. You get an awesome, awesome background separation at 85 millimeters and 1.8. Um, this is awesome for B-roll and stuff like that. I, I really like the 85 uh, millimeter focal length and um, what you can do with it handheld and a lot of that kind of stuff. So I love the 85 millimeter focal length. Um, definitely, this wouldn't be my, one of my first lenses I would get, but this is definitely one that I would highly recommend to have in your kit. Now, moving on from our center section that holds our lenses, our cameras, and our monitor, and our little camera strap for when we need a camera strap, is all of the other accessories and all the other little stuff. So right here, this is a Think Tank bag. This is one of the Think Tank cable management bags, version 2.0, I believe. Yeah, it actually says right here on the back. This is the Cable Management 10 V2.0. Anyways, this is what I use just to hold all my batteries. As you guys can see, this just holds all my batteries nice and organized all in one spot. I can pick this up and take it with me to wherever I need. I can take it outside the bag and stuff like that, but it keeps all my batteries together. And I really love these Think Tank cable management bags as you guys are about to see. Moving up from our batteries, let's go ahead and talk about our audio really quick, which we'll be doing an entire separate video on audio and the audio gear that I carry and why. But in these two bags, I carry all of my audio gear. So in here, you guys can see my Zoom H6. I also have two lapel microphones right here. These are the Rode lapel microphones. These are pretty much my favorite microphones, uh, my favorite, you know, $100 lapel microphones. In here, I also have the tiny little Ceramonic, um, I forget, X, S, X, 1MB, I forget the exact name of this Ceramonic microphone right off the top of my head, but I carry this tiny little baby Ceramonic microphone and a little adapter that I'll show you guys in a minute here. And this is my tiny little baby field recorder, lapel field recorder of choice. This is the uh, Zoom F2 BT. Now the BT part isn't so so important, but I love the F2 because it has 32-bit float, has some other awesome high quality audio options, but the 32-bit float is the one that I always use um, for a lot of the run and gun audio that I need to capture. One reason that I use the Zoom F2 instead of some type of wireless audio option is because I have always had issues with wireless audio options when it comes to professional use. I've had instances where there's been random poppings or a random high frequency sound or just a random, you know, random noises that, you know, are basically being recorded directly in the camera. And once they're recorded directly in the camera, you know, it's gonna be hard to really process that audio. But with the 32-bit float, not only do I not have to worry about audio levels, but I'm also, getting really, really clean audio straight to a SD card that I'm not gonna have to worry about interference and anything else that could happen with a wireless signal. So my second audio bag, this is simply just all the different cables and stuff that I carry with me for plugging into you know PA systems and plugging into house audio systems and everything else. I carry a nice bag that keeps everything super organized for all my different um, plug-in needs for audio. Now our last piece of audio gear that I have in the bag is our Rode VideoMic NTG. This is my microphone of choice or my shotgun microphone of choice. If I'm just looking to grab better scratch audio or better uh, ambient sounds of, you know, kind of what's going on around me, this is typically the microphone I use. However, I also like to use the Zoom H6 with the XY mic on top. And that's a lot of times that's how I'll pick up uh, just some ambient uh, audio 
to use with my edits and stuff like that. So I don't use this microphone a ton anymore, but this microphone is really versatile. I could do voiceovers and stuff like that directly into my laptop, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, this is a really nice microphone to have in the bag if I need it, but I don't find myself using it a ton. Along with the Rode VideoMic NTG, I have a little XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapter. This little adapter basically just allows me to use the, my XLR um, top handle for my Sony FX3, but along with the XLR top handle, I can also use something like my uh, Blink 500 Pro B2, which is one of my other audio devices that I sometimes use for specific occasions. Along with the Rode VideoMic NTG, I have my CCA um, actual monitoring headphones. These are the headphones that I use to actually monitor all of my audio. I just have them wrapped up on this little card um, just to keep the wires nice and uh, tidy. That way they're not getting all tangled up in my bag. Um, and I just keep those with the Rode VideoMic NTG because they, they fit nicely in that little cubby hole. So putting that stuff back, moving on from there in our next pocket, we have all of my rigging equipment. So this is all the stuff that I would use to rig up my camera. This right here just so happens to be a side handle with an Arca Swiss base plate or an Arca Swiss clamp. This Arca Swiss clamp allows me to shoot uh, vertical videos really, really easily. So I can just basically, you know, toss my FX three or toss my a7c onto this side handle and now i have an awesome little vertical rig and a lot of times i actually put my monitor on top and now i have an awesome uh super large screen to frame up my shots and i have this nice side handle so i can really get a good uh grasp on my camera to really shoot good vertical good you know, professional vertical video on a really, really good camera. So this is how I'm gonna be shooting all of my vertical video moving into 2022. I'll definitely be talking to you guys more on that. But in here, we also have another side handle for our FX3 for regular, you know, <clears throat> landscape shooting and a bunch of other rigging equipment, small rig clamps, um, articulating arms, small little stuff like that. Under there, we now have our NPF batteries. These are for something coming up in just a second, but we have four NPF batteries, and just below the NPF batteries, we have my flash kit. So in the flash kit, we just so happen to have the Godox TT350, and we have the Godox X2T trigger. This is an awesome little combo, and it works perfectly with my Godox, you know, AD200, a bigger flash kit that I'll bring out on gigs that I, that, you know, require that. Moving on from all of the accessories, kind of in this back little portion right here, we now have the newest addition to my camera bag. This is really what I was waiting for. This is like the product I needed to really finish off this bag, and it literally fits perfectly in here along with all the cables and everything and that is the Aperture Amaran 60X. This is an awesome light. I have not had a ton of uh, actual use with it yet so I don't want to give too much of a review on it but just for my first initial impressions I'm really really liking this light so I'm excited to add this to the kit and get a little bit more hands-on with this light and use it for uh, some actual paid work. But I just got this light the other day, but man, it fits literally perfectly inside of this case, along with the uh, all the cables. And I have everything else that I need in there in order to, you know, really light pretty much whatever I'm gonna need to light as far as like a subject or two, or products, or anything like that. This is gonna be an awesome light. Moving on from there, we have a couple small cleaning things. I have some ProMaster uh, actual huge wipes. I think these are like 12 inches by 12 inches, but these are really big square uh, microfiber towels that I use to help clean all my lenses, my camera gear, whatever I need to clean. And they come in these really cool little nice uh, neoprene style bags. I also have uh, just some typical lens cleaner uh, if I have a little bit more dirtier of lenses. 
Along with that, in the bottom of this case, I do have an on-camera light. This is just a small little 20 watt Pixel G1. This is a pretty old light now at this point, but this has been a really, really nice light and does what you need it to do when you need a light. So I love the Pixel G1 light. I think they do make a much newer version of this. Um, but a tiny little 20 watt light like this does a lot of work. Right next to the light, I do have a case of ND filters um, <clears throat> along with some Tiffin uh, filters in this case. So these are all the filters that I use. Some of them are actually still on the lenses because uh, I just leave them permanently on sometimes. Along with that, I have a remote for my cameras. This remote is awesome because it just allows me to trigger my B camera on and off remotely. That way I can stay on my A cam um, and my B camera or my tripod camera. I can do re remote stuff with that as I'm you know, shooting throughout the day. And this is also awesome for photography uh, so that you're not shaking the camera when you're trying to take your shots. So I, I definitely like having a remote in here. Now to lock up this case, I actually use these Nanook locks. These are super cool little locks and they actually, all they are is just this little tiny bar. So instead of having like an, a whole lock in there that somebody could just cut, cut the outside of the lock, um, this one is only a pin going through the thing and you're not going to be able to get a tool in there in order to cut this lock off. So you could really only drill it out or something like that. But that's all this lock is. Um, this rubber piece just holds the, the pin when you're not, you know, using it. Um, but I really, really, really like these locks. They are a little pricey. I think they're 20 bucks a piece, but well worth it, um, especially when you got thousands and thousands of dollars of gear inside your case. So anyways, guys, that is my entire case. That's This is my entire production case. Everything that I carry with me from day to day on productions, on shoots, um, and to client locations. This has everything that I need, um, minus a couple small things that I may have to carry separately, specifically something like a, a two by one light panel obviously isn't gonna fit in here. I do have a separate flash kit that I might swap the gimbal out for or swap the drone kit out for to get it to fit in here. Um, so there is certain things that I do swap in and out and there's certain things that just don't fit in this case even though it's massive case. We just went over all of the gear in my production case for early 2022, but over the course of the past three years that I've been full-time as a content creator, my gear has drastically changed and so has the work that I've done um, as a content creator. I used, when I very first started getting into content creation, I only shot photography, but now I find myself doing probably 75 to 80% video work along with some photo. So it's drastic, my work has drastically changed, my equipment has drastically changed, and I'm not showing you guys all of this stuff as a flex or anything like that. I'm showing you guys all of this gear because this has allowed me to be extremely efficient with my clients and produce valuable content that people are willing to pay for, and I have maintained a full-time living on uh, the gear that I have in inside of this case for the past three years or you know the evolving uh, gear that's been going in and out of this specific case for the past year but um, you know my case has definitely changed over time I used to only carry a book bag with a couple pieces of gear and I got a lot done with that and that slowly evolved into this so Definitely invest in your gear, but also invest in learning how to use the gear because this is a very, very small portion of being a content creator. The other 75% of being a content creator is actually the back end of business, learning how to edit and all of that type of stuff. This is a very, very small portion is the gear and learning how to actually use the gear is a very small portion of making money as a content creator. So moving forward on this channel, we will be doing a lot 
more tutorials on how I actually shoot video and how I actually shoot photo in order to make money with my clients as a full-time content creator. So if you guys are looking for more content like that, definitely hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you guys get notified when I post content. It definitely helps out the channel. And do not forget to leave a comment down below. What I really want to know from you guys is what is a piece of gear that has really made you guys more efficient when you guys are working with clients or what is a piece of gear that has really improved the overall look or feel of your guys's videos or the what's a piece of audio gear that has really improved the sound of your guys's videos i would love to hear what works for your guys's workflow and you never know what I might end up having in this case in the future, but um, I always try to have the best tool that fits for the work that I do. And right now, these are the best tools that I've come up with or that I've uh, been able to afford for my content creation needs. And right now, I'm really, really, really happy with the overall results that I can get from this whole entire kit. Anyways, that is all I have for today's video. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.